It's May 10th, 1895, and the 300-foot steamer Cayuga is sailing in fog. The crew is oblivious that soon, David would sink Goliath. The Cayuga was one of five identical ships built in the late 1880s as crack express freight carriers. The ships are owned by the Lehigh Valley Transit Company. The Cayuga is sailing across Lake Michigan, with grain in her hold and a fog surrounding her. As the journey went on, the Cayuga entered a fog bank off Charlevoix, Michigan. Although there was danger in proceeding at a fast speed, the vessel continued its fast pace, slowing only slightly. As the ship was consumed by fog, the crew spotted the lights of another vessel before it vanished into the thick fog. It's 4 a.m. on May the 10th of 1895. The Cayuga is sailing in a thick, dark fog when all of a sudden, the ship slammed into the Joseph L. Hurd, a 30-year-old wooden vessel half its size. The Hurd's bow was ripped cleanly off, but despite this, the vessel stayed afloat. How? Its cargo of pine boards was keeping it afloat, and it was in no danger of sinking. As for the Cayuga, the vessel seemed fine, but soon started listening to its starboard side. Water started entering into a six by two foot opening. The pumps were turned on, but nothing could be done. The Cayuga sank 20 minutes later. As for the Joseph L. Hurd, it was towed back to Harbor Springs with both crews present. All had survived the incident. The Joseph L. Hurd itself was repaired and sailed for many more years as the steamer's owners had insured the vessel at up to $10,800. According to Tom Reed, all hope was not lost for the Cayuga. As far as he was concerned, the vessel was salvageable and could sail again. This, of course, is how Tom Reed and his father had built their business upon, taking salvage jobs that other companies wouldn't attempt. But now, they would face the biggest project yet, recovering the 300-foot steel-hulled freighter Cayuga. The plan? Fasten giant steel drums, or pontoons, to the hull, fill them up with air, and turn, lifting the ship to the surface, where it could be towed to shallow waters, and any water remaining pumped out. Easier said than done. The pontoons would have to be of particularly big size, specifically 30 feet long and 13 feet wide. To add on to that, six pontoons would be required. Although there were setbacks, the project would begin. The six pontoons, built in Bay City, Michigan, were fastened to the hull's sides with the use of 8-inch cables and timber to reduce strain on the hull. To put things into perspective, it took years just to complete this. Now, the next step, lifting it up to the surface. In order to do this, the pontoons had to be filled with air, but there was one issue with this. The pontoons could only be filled individually and not all at once. Because of this, they constantly broke free, causing extensive damage to the vessel and even sinking a supply barge. The salvage was a failure. The outcome? $15,000 worth of pontoons were lost, a barge sunk, a diver died, another one had been seriously injured, and significant damage to the Cayuga itself. The expenses for the salvage even exceeded what the vessel was worth. The Cayuga was left to itself, a destroyed and ugly version of the once beautiful vessel. As for Tom Reed and the Reed Company, they would eventually be successful again, overcoming their financial crisis. But Tom Reed would never let the Cayuga be mentioned again, something he carried to his grave in 1958. The Cayuga was rediscovered in 1969, just as it was left in 1900. A mess. The wreck serves as a reminder that salvaging big ships is a near impossible task. Well... That is, at least for now. Anyway, subscribe for more shipwreck videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.